materials that we have out so that we can go over them. We have our emaluma, our memocell, our opal brackets, our patient models. We have various measuring gauges. We have our Zahn gauge. We have our sharp mechanical pencil. We have our bonding agents. We have our separating medium. We have a black box marking the models for the placement of the brackets. The long axis of the teeth should be marked. And it is often helpful to use a radiograph so that the long axis of the teeth can be compared to the pantograph. Make sure there isn't problems with crown root relationships. We use the bracket placement guide to determine the appropriate position for the brackets and the tubes on the teeth. There are a number of ways of marking the teeth. It's a boon gauge. It goes from three and a half through five. Zahn gauges, which have lead built into the end to aid in marking. They go through three and a half to five. Unitec makes a set of bracket placement tools that go from two and a half through five. Or a bully gauge or caliper can be used to mark the teeth as well. I found that the Zahn gauges make things much simpler to do. In order to determine the placement of the brackets on the teeth, we take a look at the incisors and determine the midpoint of the teeth and the exposure of the lateral, central and lateral incisors. For this patient, we're going to choose four and a half as a position for the centrals, four for the laterals, and follow the guide for the placement of the bicuspids and the molars. So we take our design gauge at four and a half, and we mark the central. We take the gauge for the laterals at four. First by cuspids will be four. Cuspids three and a half. And the molars are at three, which we'll use the bowling gauge for. Once we have the models marked, we will go ahead and coat them with a separating medium. In this case, we're using one from Great Lakes called liquid foil. And we'll paint the teeth with a separating medium and a brush so that we can easily remove the brackets after they're bonded to the teeth. And we'll coat both the top and the bottom. Once the separating medium has dried, which only takes a few minutes, you can go ahead and place the brackets on the marked models. We'll start with the lower right molar. I'm going to use opal seal. on the model at the marked position. And we want to be sure to remove the flash. And we now have our molar bracket placed. Second by cuspid. Put the back. Very small 
light material. Place it correctly in position. Push it against the tooth. Remove the flash. And position the bracket relative to the markings on the tooth. When the staff have questions about where the bracket should be, they'll oftentimes use the little black box that we have here, courtesy of Opal. Any of your doctors can get these from Opal by ordering enough CXI or MX brackets. Staff would put it in there. It's light tight. The brackets won't set up. I can adjust them and then the staff is able to go ahead and cure them to the model. I recommend that you wear glasses when you use the Velo lights to protect your eyes. And then we will go around and cure each of the tubes and brackets. Now we have our models with our brackets placed and cured. It's time to use boxing wax, white wax, to create a wax seal around our models. And you place the wax so that it is just below the brackets and we place it on the lingual or palatal side in order to create a, a stop, a positive stop on the occlusal surface. There we go. And this is where our it's going to hold our emoluma and our memosil in place when we wrap it with some plastic. Placing the wax close to the brackets and not on them means that we'll use the minimum amount of the material, have a little waste, and makes finishing the brackets that much faster. We've got our boxing wax placed on here. We've got our emoluma to use. The emoluma holds the brackets in place and then the memocell which creates the stiffer tray. Uh, in order to help finish all of this we use some plastic sheeting. This is pretty simple to come from uh, to come by from the uh, any office supply store. Uh, it's just plastic from uh, uh, binders, uh, page holders. We just use that around there in order to create the tray. So we'll go ahead and we'll make the lower tray with the emoluma. The way to use the emoluma is to express a small amount just on each bracket. Push the emoluma in place to cover the entire bracket. No more. That's about a five minute working time, so we can go ahead and do two trays. Memoso. We'll now cover the occlusal surface and the rest of the buckle, creating the bulk of the tray and our positive occlusal stops. plastic sheeting and create the rest of the tray. Moving that around to just create the tray there. We'll fill the rest of it then. Piece to go over the top. Forcing the 
Then let's uh, to create a nice flat surface. That's the lower. Once the uh, the silicon trays have hardened, uh, the plastic material containing them can be removed, and then the trays soaked in warm water in order to remove the trays from the models. We've had our uh, tray soak in here. Now it's time to go ahead and we can remove some of the material around the sides. Relax. I find this is a easy time to finish with our with a sharp knife. Makes it very simple to go ahead and trim this. When it's trimmed on the model, there's less chance for distortion or tearing the material. And loosen the tray. I oftentimes find that just pushing down on the brackets is very good for getting it to loosen up. And then we can take the tray off. Tray off. The brackets are now inside of the tray. The model is there. We can do the same thing for the upper. Uh, it's important to go ahead and recure any metal brackets with the Velo Light just to make sure that the plastic is cured. The ceramic brackets, because of the, their nature, the fact that they're clear, are going to cure all the way through when exposed to the Velo Light. I'm going to go ahead and use our Danville Air Abrasion Unit to remove the surface layer on the customized base on each one of the brackets. The metal brackets are a little bit more forgiving. We should be careful that we're only removing a small amount of material on the ceramic bracket, brackets because the bracket base has been prepared. If you go ahead and remove all the bonding material, you'll end up with a weakened bracket base. So check to make sure that pencil marks are removed. That's clear. That one is clear. There's some dust in here and that should just be blown out with an air syringe. So we have uh, cleaned the inside of the trays with acetone and prepped the surface. It's now clean, dry. We're going to go ahead and mark the midlines of each tray so that it makes it much simpler for us to seat the tray in the mouth correctly. We've got our midlines marked. Then we're going to take our trays.